Good morning. Okay, so what is it? A little bit after 8 30. On vacation. I've been in Vegas. It's supposed to be a vacation. I've been in Vegas. Okay. So basically what's been on the news lately has been this guy, right? What's his name? Rex? I think it's Rex. Okay. So basically I never knew any of this until like a few days ago, right? And so I'm watching the news, or I'm watching YouTube news that is, and I'm seeing that this guy is a potential suspect in a serious murder case that started in 2007 through 2000, 2010. And so I'm watching it, whatever, and the thing I'm looking at with this guy is, usually if you think about a serial killer, this is my personal opinion, you think about a person that maybe has been down and out on their luck, looking a little bit rough, looking a little bit crazy, not really adding much to society, right? That's usually the thought that I have in my head when I think of a serial killer. Well, look, <laughs> these thoughts that I've had in my head or the thoughts that I had in my head about a serial killer is wrong. And now I'm starting to realize the world is really changing, right? So I'm looking at this guy and I can't say he nice looking, right? But he was well put together, okay? He's a businessman, he's educated, he has a family, he has a wife, and he has um, two kids. I don't know if there's a boy or girl or whatever, but I know he has two kids. And so I'm watching it and they're like, yeah. Um, they found about 11 bodies over those period of years. And they're saying that out of nine of the bodies, uh, one was a child, one was, I think a male, I believe it was, right? So basically, this has been going on for some years, okay? And they're saying that it, they don't believe that it was him, like that he killed all 11 people, but they're saying that out of 11 people, they believe that he killed four of the people. And they're saying that because the way, the way that these people were, like the material they were wrapped in, and then the age, they were all like in their early 20s, and they were all sex workers. And so the theory is that when his wife, took the children out of town or went on vacation to Maryland and I think Iceland that instead of him being at home, enjoying his me time, enjoying just relaxing and having peace and quiet, he decided to go and purchase burner phones and to go pick up escorts and to apparently unalive women. Now, Looking at this guy, I just wouldn't think that he would do that, right? But I'm wrong, because allegedly he did these things. And the way that they figured it out, or they tried, they kind of like put two or two together was, there was like some kind of DNA from him, maybe a piece of hair or something that fell from him onto, I think two of the victims, one for sure. And so basically they did some tests and they were able to see that the, the hair was like, it matched DNA matched up with his. And then they were able to, this took like a matter of months too. It wasn't, well it took years for them to f figure out who it was, but it took months for them to be able to go through all these different processes and procedures to be able to get the right, I guess, approval to investigate him without him knowing, right? So they go, they get the information, they use the information that he threw away, which was a, <laughs> some, Goodness, it's not funny, but basically he ate some pizza, he threw it away, and they were able to run some tests on that piece of pizza, pizza box to get his DNA, right? Disposable DNA. So they got that, they were able to tie him in like that. So the interesting thing is, too, is that he's saying, of course, he's saying that he didn't do it. And I mean, just, just think, after all these years, would you say that you did it? I don't know. I mean, of course he's going to sit to the story and say he didn't do it. So he's saying he didn't do it, he's innocent, and he said that through the delivery of his lawyer. Um, so I watched a few videos, and on a few of the ones that I did see, they were saying that he did an interview, I guess about his company or his business, whatever, and he was, you know, the interview was decent. I don't know, it wasn't nothing special. It was just, it was an interview. He was talking about what he did for work, which I think he developed like buildings or he, yeah, he developed like plans for different companies' buildings. And I don't know, it's just, it's weird though, right? It's, this whole story is weird to me. Not because 
people like a crime was committed but it's weird in terms of the fact that it took so long first of all and then the other part of it too it, which is interesting is the fact that even up to recently he was looking like he was invest like he wasn't investigating but i guess he was like following the case right i think maybe he he knew that at some point they were gonna find him or he was just curious as about the movement of how the case was going but even the people that were on the case they were saying that they didn't want to give much information away they weren't like really holding press conferences that often because they, they didn't want him or whoever it was to know how far along they had come on figuring out who it was. So basically this whole time he's been looking here and there like following the case or following, following the situation. And then they said that at one point he was um, uh, harassing one of the victims uh, the people that he are alive. Like, I guess he was harassing the sister through a burner phone. So they were able to trace, oh yeah, I know what it was that got me, got my attention. So I love to watch the show Power, right? And in Power, they're really big on these burner phones, right? They make you think, oh, you get a burner phone, you can just live your best life, do whatever evil stuff you're gonna do, and you just toss the burner phone. Yeah, okay, and wrong. Because <laughs> in this case, they were able to do a lot of tracking with the burner phone in regards to or in connection with the other people's phones. So yeah, it's a burner phone, but it doesn't operate or it doesn't work how we've been programmed to think. Like if it's a burner phone, no one be able to catch you. Yeah, they're gonna be able to catch you, okay? <laughs> not that you should be out there doing wrong anyways, but I'm saying burner phones are not what you think, what you thought they were. You can still, they're still trackable to a certain degree. And you can still get that information from the burner phone. So on the burner phone, yes, it's tying him in, in connection with these people. Like it's showing that he knew the people or some of them that they, he had had like some kind of um, communication with them, that he's seen them at some point. So I think when this does go to trial, he's already been indicted, I feel like they're gonna show a lot of this phone data evidence and that's really gonna tie him in even more to this case. So I thought that was interesting to know that uh, these track phones and these burner phones, is not how we have a program to think about them. And then, um, I think it's just sad. It's sad for everybody. It's sad for the families. It's sad for his family because the wife apparently didn't know that he's out here just living his best free crazy criminal life. He has children. You know, he had a business. So hopefully, hopefully soon we'll get more information on this and I'm just glad that for the victims' families, they can finally like get some kind of closure with this, or that it's finally going to be headed towards them getting closure with this. I mean, it's hard to, lo to lose a loved one, period, right? No one wants someone to be to. No one wants to lose a family member, let alone them be murdered. I mean, just outright cruel. That's a cruel thing to do to somebody, period, right? So at least they have an idea now of what possibly happened and they can move forward to get justice against this person and justice for this for their family. So that's that. So y'all, thanks for watching. Bye.